What is going on everybody? Today we're going to go over some basic maintenance to keep your spin reels and casting reels rolling smooth all year long. So it is a new year, 2023 is in front of us and 2022 is behind us. So if you were like me and you have been using your gear for the whole year, it is now time to do some basic maintenance to make sure that these things run smoothly. Now I get a lot of people talking about uh, the scariness of doing maintenance and the struggle of doing maintenance and how it's easier to just buy a new reel versus actually doing the maintenance. So today I'm gonna show you some very simple and straightforward techniques that don't take a lot of time at all that will keep your reel running smoothly all throughout 2023. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Now before we get started with today's video, if you do find it helpful, please hit that thumbs up or subscribe button and let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a full reel breakdown in the future. When I start maintenance on any reel, the first thing that I like to do is pull out the blueprints and the maintenance kit from my box. If you can't find them in your box, you can usually locate these online. In this maintenance kit, you can usually find a lot of great information, do's and don'ts, and then you'll have a backup reference in case anything goes wrong. Now speaking of do's and don'ts, a few things I would stay away from is using WD-40 on your reels. While WD-40 does help with seized and rusty equipment, it is not meant for reels or bearings, so do not use it. Secondly, be careful with the amount of soap that you use if you do use soapy water. A lot of times, soap can cause excess films on your reel which will eventually cake up and cause them to seize even more. I've found that using just oil or warm water is usually best. And finally, if you're not comfortable with taking apart your reel, don't do it. Just follow these simple steps that we'll be doing today. Now to go over the items you'll need. Oil, grease, Q-tips, and a few paper towels is really all you need. But if you see a lot of debris in your reel or your bearings, you might want to grab a toothbrush as well. Now if you do want to completely disassemble your reel, I recommend you do it on a tray so if anything falls out, it's easy to find and any small parts I always place inside of an ice tray. I also use smaller containers to soak the nasty grimy parts if needed. Now the first thing you'll want to do is secure the line on your reels. Spin reels typically have a line tag that you can secure the line onto, but if they don't, you can always use tape. And that is what we'll be using on our casting reels. A simple piece of tape will hold that line down and keep it secure. Taking a look at my spin reel, you can see it's definitely got some grime and debris on this thing, so it's ready for a cleaning for sure. We'll start by loosening the drag all the way. Once you've done this, you lift the spool off and you're already accessing the main shaft of the reel. As you can see, there is a lot of grime and dirt sitting on the base of this, and if you look at the shaft, there's also a lot of grease built up there. It seems to be very, very dark in color as well. Now typically grease on a shaft is not a bad thing, but when it's this dark, it's definitely got some debris in it and it's time for a cleaning. Taking a look inside the spool, it looks fairly clean in comparison to that reel. I didn't notice any sort of dirt, so we're not really going to have to clean this thing. Now when we remove the spool tension knob, you'll see that there is grease located underneath this. This is what I call good grease. Typically, you do not want to remove this grease unless it has some sort of debris in it. The only time I'll have to clean these is when I go saltwater fishing and you get salt water on your reel. Other than that, these typically stay pretty clean and pretty sealed and help the drag system work smoothly, so you do want to have grease on this area of your reel. So we don't want to remove this grease. Now it's time to clean the shaft. We're going to go with a simple two-step process. We're going to clean off the grease that is on the reel right now. Be careful when you're cleaning the shaft, some pieces may come loose, and that's one reason why we wanted to make sure to have our maintenance and blueprints guide handy. Once we get the shaft nice and cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and clean the rest of the grease off of the spool. Once we get the shaft cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and clean the rest of the spool's undercarriage off. Then we're going to oil up that shaft. Then we're going to give it a few cranks so that oil gets down into the shaft and releases any more of that dirt and debris. Once again we'll rinse and repeat by cleaning it off, oiling it up, and cranking it again. You can see the second time around, the grease is not as dark, but it's still dirty, so we're going to clean it off. After this though, we're not going to oil the shaft anymore, instead we're just going to crank it and then we're going to take a look. As you can see, the shaft looks nice and clean, but there is still a coat of grease on there. That is exactly what you want on your spin reels. This will reduce the friction on your shaft and allow the spool to spin freely and allow your bearings to operate nice and smoothly. Next, we're gonna oil up the reel clasps. This is something that people overlook quite often, but they get a lot of grime and dirt in them, so I like to oil them up yearly. Typically, this is a very simple process. We're just gonna apply one drop of oil on each one of these clasps, 
and then open it back and forth until it feels nice and smooth. After doing this for a few seconds, you'll feel the debris loosen up and the clasps move nice and smoothly. Our final step is going to be oiling the bearing inside the spool. This is a fairly simple process. We're gonna add one drop of oil and I'm gonna rotate that drop around the actual bearing so it gets nice and lubricated. Once we've done this, we're just gonna reassemble our spin reel and we're good to go. Typically, I like to crank it a few times once again and let it rest on a paper towel in case any oil wants to seep out. After 24 hours, you should be good to fish. Now it's time to take a look at the casting reel. These things are a little bit more complex when it comes to disassembling, but maintenance can be even easier. Most bait casters have locking mechanisms that hold the side plate shut. You can usually locate this switch on your blueprints or user manual. Removing the spool from this reel, I was quite surprised. It looks fairly clean, there's not a lot of grime, not a lot of dirt, so there's not going to be a lot of maintenance for this thing. But if you look up front, there is an exposed worm gear. This is going to be the main focus of our bait caster. I started by cleaning the side plate of the bearing and that's when I noticed blue grease. Blue grease is an automatic red flag for me. That means that this reel is meant for saltwater fishing and not just freshwater fishing, which means we need to be extra careful when placing oil. We'll be strictly placing it only on bearings and the worm gear. One drop on each bearing is all you'll need. Opening up the spool tension knob, I noticed that there was a seal plate as well. This is another red flag that we need to be extra careful with this area. We don't want any extra liquids to seep into the gearbox and cause the grease to break down. So one tiny drop and we're gonna seal it right back up. After this, I added a little bit of oil to the worm gear just to break down the old grease. We're gonna go ahead and hit it with that same repeat process that we did with the spin reel. We're gonna oil it, crank it, clean it, and repeat. With the baitcaster reel, I'm only gonna oil it once, so after we've cleaned it twice, it is now time to apply some grease. One small drop in the center of the worm gear is all you should need. Give it a few cranks, make sure that grease is nice and spread out and there's no extra debris and you should be good to go. Finally, we're going to take a look at the release switch. This is an area that is commonly overlooked, but it needs its maintenance as well. Inside this switch, there is a tiny spring that allows the switch to open and close. Without proper lubrication, this switch can break or seize and then your bait caster won't be any good. Typically, these switches only have one spring and you can tell which side has the spring because it'll have an opening, but make sure to double check your user manual or blueprints for guidelines. After that, we'll give it a quick cleaning, reassemble the reel, and you're good to go. One final thing I'll point out is if you tighten down your spool tension knob all the way like I did, you're going to have a hard time getting that spool in there. So make sure you loosen it up just a little bit and then you're good to go. Give your reel a few cranks, double check it, and as you can see, it is rolling smoothly. Hopefully this video helped you out. I really appreciate you guys taking a look at it. Once again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and thank you again for watching.